What's going on creative family, it's Dustin Falkelman and welcome back. Today we're talking about how to retouch smarter in Photoshop using linked documents aka dual vision. Thanks for being here folks. Let's get started. All right guys, so here we are in Photoshop and what we'll do to set up this dual vision is we'll head up to window, arrange, and then new window for whatever your document name is. And what that does is it just duplicates that document. So these two documents are now linked. And then we'll head back up to window, arrange, two up vertical. And so this just places your documents side by side in your layout. What I typically like to do here is head in and make my left side a slightly pulled back version so that I can see exactly what's happening to the overall image at a macro level. And then I will take the right image here and zoom this in so that I can work on like the micro details and things like that. So really any of these hairs that she has on her face, anything like that. So if we create a new layer, you can see that once we just say use a brush tool and we paint over, that's going to affect both of these documents equally and it will just update here real time as soon as we're done making the stroke. Something to note in navigating these two documents is that you can still hold your spacebar and navigate or pan each of these documents individually. You can also hold control or command in the spacebar to click and drag and that will enable like a scrubby zoom here in Photoshop to each of these documents. But what's really cool is if you hold shift and spacebar, it's going to actually pan both of the documents together regardless of the way that you have these zoomed in. So if I zoom into the eye here and I hold shift and spacebar, you'll see that it starts to move a little bit around the document this way, which is actually really nice because if you happen to have this left image zoomed a little bit further in, you can see that update as you start to retouch, say the sides of the face and things like that. And it will also help you keep a little bit more on track at times, just visually seeing exactly where you're moving around the photo. When you're done using this split or dual vision approach to your retouching, you can just close one of the documents and then you'll be left with the singular document that you had before. Now that we have all of that out of the way here, let's see how we can set that up as an action so that our dual vision can happen a lot quicker. So what we'll do here is we'll open our actions panel. If you don't have this in your layout anywhere, you can just head up to window and then you can click right on actions or alt, alt or option F9. And that will bring up this action panel here. And then what we can do is we can just click this little layer icon to create a new action. We can name that dual vision, then click record. So while that's recording, what we'll do is we'll just click this little hamburger icon here in the corner of this panel. And then we can say insert menu item. And then what we'll have to do here is actually navigate to window, arrange, new window for our document name. And then we can click OK. And then do that again. So we'll say insert menu item, go to window, arrange, to up vertical, click OK, and then we can just stop the recording of that action. So to test that action, all we'll have to do is click on dual vision here at the top of this action group, and then just click the play button, and we'll see that that sets up our dual vision properly. One of the other ways that I actually like to use actions is called button mode. So if you click the little hamburger again, and then we head up to button mode, you'll see that all of the actions that we currently have in your set will be listed as buttons here. So that all I'll have to do when I open a new image prior to any retouching, I just hit dual vision and then that pops right up. All right guys, so that's how you set up the dual vision in Photoshop. It just helps you work a little bit smarter so that you can focus on both the macro and micro adjustments that you're making while retouching. It's really good to have that set up for things like frequency separation, when you can get a little bit too carried away and you have to keep zooming in and out and see exactly what's going on in your photo. So this will kind of help take care of that and give you a little bit more of an overall scope of what's going on in your image. 
Now, one thing to note is that when you do set this up, always make sure to set this up on a single document. Don't have multiple documents open because this process won't work that well when you have multiple documents all over the place and things get a little bit crazy and out of hand. So I hope that you guys like this little quick tip video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share this with your friends. It's been a good time, folks. I'll see you guys in the next video.